My name is Cheryl Vito. I've been working in clinical research and medical writing for over 25 years. And when I started in clinical research, I did start in a phase one unit. So I got a real close hand view of investigators' brochures, both from writing them and from working with those that had been already prepared. So I'm really excited today to talk to you about this topic. I do find writing investigators' brochures very interesting. I think it's one of the most interesting documents that we write in clinical research. So I hope you think the same. Here's a brief overview of some of the things we're going to talk about today. We'll talk a little bit about the summary. We'll discuss the regulations. We'll talk about each section of the investigators' brochure and the information that is required for those sections. The general length and the expected length versus what you typically see in brochures. Some writing tips, I think it's very important to understand some of the basics of writing. Whether you're writing the brochure or just reviewing it, it's important to know these things. Then we're going to delve more into the section requirements. We're going to talk about updates by phase of investigation, documenting any changes, and what happens if you have more than one indication. All right, let's talk about goals when writing the investigator's brochure. The first thing that I want you to think about is just like any other document you write, like a protocol or, or a clinical study report, this is a regulatory or clinical document, and all documents that we, we write for regulatory and clinical processes should be concise, they should be simple, and, and by that I mean they should be very basic in terms of the information that they give, not necessarily simple in a, in a lower form way. They must be objective and balanced and definitely non-promotional in form. None of the documents that we write to send to FDA or any other regulatory agency from a clinical perspective are to be promotional. Those documents that are promotional definitely go through other channels, as I'm sure you know. So when you're writing the investigator's brochure, you really want to represent your company's best work. This document is very different, although I say it's very similar to a lot of uh, clinical documents, it's also very different in a number of ways. This document is really sort of your draft product label, if you will, or your package insert. So you really want to ver be very clear of what information you're presenting in this document. You want to be able to enable any potential investigator to truly understand the compound and make an unbiased risk-benefit assessment of that compound so that they can decide whether they really want to recruit patients to be in a study or subjects to be in a study and feel that they, they're, they're confident in what they're doing and know exactly how to deal with any situations that come up. So as with any other document, you want to know your audience. In this case, your audience is definitely reviewers, uh, internal reviewers. There are going to be investigators and key study personnel that hopefully will be reading this document. Definitely your key opinion leaders if you're working with them. All of your institutional review boards or ethics committees and all the regulatory agencies that you're submitting this to and all the personnel at those regulatory agencies should be definitely reviewing this. So knowing your audience means you understand that each type of audience has a perspective. Your IRB may be looking at the document a little differently than an investigator might or, or how an internal reviewer might look at it. So you want to write effectively to communicate to each of these recipients in their perspective base for how they're reviewing the document as well as to have them all have the same takeaway message. Now for, regulatory, for our regulatory officials or uh, anybody in a regulatory agency, the things you want to communicate and justify in your investigator brochure are a good perspective of the disease, what the standard of care for that disease, if one exists, compared with your drug, any other drugs in the class of drugs that you're developing this drug for, why your starting dose makes sense. That's very important. Why are you choosing this dose? There must be some reason you have to justify why this dose is being chosen and why your drug can and should be used in humans. So if you have a safety profile in humans, you need to project that information. Otherwise, whatever your non-clinical data are. And you also very clearly want to explain how human subjects should be monitored in any clinical trial. Now for investigators and site personnel, you want to communicate the relevant safety information so that they can make a determination whether or not this is a study they want to do. So you definitely should have a risk-benefit analysis. You want to also explain how to safely administer the drug. And some drugs, it's not that big of a deal. But if you have an IV drug or an injectable drug, it's a little different than if you have a tablet or a capsule, for instance. You, you very clearly want to state your storage conditions and the rationale for use in the clinical study or studies that are going to be conducted. Mm -hmm.